Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it is a rookie minicamp recap Monday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. And on today's show, we're going to go over everything that took place over the weekend at Titans rookie minicamp. I'm going to go over Traylon Burks up and down start. Also go over all the highlights and the biggest takeaways from day one and day two. So it is a Titans rookie minicamp recap Monday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a rookie minicamp recap Monday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Try saying that four times fast. And it is presented by BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're going to get into Traylon Burks up and down first day at Titans Rookie Minicamp. We're going to get into the highlights and the big takeaways from both days of Rookie Minicamp over the weekend. Before we do, I got to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen to the Locked On Titans podcast, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You are going to find the Locked On Titans podcast everywhere and always free. That includes the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe there. Smash that notification bell so you know when all the content goes live. Throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching on YouTube right now. I really do appreciate the support. You can follow me on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans. Follow the show Facebook page at Locked On Titans Pod. I am going to be putting out daily Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content free, not only during the season, but all year long. So make sure that you stay locked in to the Locked On Titans podcast. But we got to dive into the biggest story over the weekend, and it kind of unfolded on Friday, but it was the up and down beginning for Traylon Burks. And the beginning, at least, was really more just down. No way around it caused uh, quite uh, the conversation on social media within the Titans fan base. But let me lay out to you guys exactly what happened so you guys know the facts of the matter and how things unfolded. So number one, we got some tweets from Titans beat reporters who were on hand for Rookie Minicamp. Now, Rookie Minicamp is a two-day program for the Titans. Took place on Friday and Saturday. Included around uh, 37, 38 total players. Of course, you have the nine rookies. There's about 17 undrafted free agents for the Titans. you got seven guys who are just on a tryout basis. And then there were some second-year players who joined the camp. Guys like Mason Kinsey, safety Rodney Clemens, offensive tackle Christian DeLauro, uh, Shaheem Carter, who's also a safety. So, a collection of about 35 guys out there. Well, beat reporters for the Titans were covering the event, and the first one that I saw was Ben Arthur, and he tweeted out that Traylon Burks, the Titans' first-round rookie, was having some struggles. He said that he was limited throughout the day. He looked like he was laboring in individual drills. He was pulled off the field at one point in time during individual drills, got ice put on his neck, which oh, feels so good when you're working out in the hot. So I know how that is, Traylon. I I don't blame you there, but he came back in for some teamwork before getting pulled again after just a few snaps. And again, he looked like he was really laboring, really having trouble with his breathing, and eventually he was taken inside. Now, there was a video that came out later on that day showing Traylon Burks, or Traylon, I know that that's a tough thing early on for me. I called him Traylon. Um... Traylon for most of the pre-draft process, so to get that corrected and switch over, you guys know how it is. You try to say something a certain way a long time, try to flip it over. But uh, Traylon Burks, there was a video of him outside the Titans facility with a trainer, having trouble breathing. It looked like he took an inhaler. Um, So a couple of different things here. That was obviously a big story. Everybody's freaking out. You know, he's not ready to go. This guy's supposed to replace AJ, blah, 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 all the negative accounts. And I was a little concerned about it, but not in the same way and the same level that other people need to or seem to be, at least, in my opinion. So, yeah, 
Would you have loved the Titans' first-round rookie to come in day one and be awesome and not have any conditioning problems? Yes. 100%. It wasn't the most ideal outcome possible. That's a fact. But maybe the guy has asthma. He hit an inhaler. Now, I have to admit, I got to say a big my bad here. I got to go my bad. I was a little too, uh, I guess, aggressive with my thought that, hey, maybe it's not a medical inhaler, and I know pretty much every inhaler is going to be used for medical reasons, but, hey, guys sit on the sideline and use oxygen masks and oxygen tanks. That's medical equipment not made for sports. Have you guys ever heard of a traveling IV service that will literally come to your hotel after a long night of having a good time and hook you up to an IV so that you can get over the hangover and get ready to go? Medical equipment is multi-purposed into other uh, areas of work than just the medical field. But but some of the intel that I've gotten from over the weekend from some people I know uh, who cover Arkansas, he may very well have asthma. And I kind of ignored that as a possibility, and that's my bad. So he may have asthma. Now, guys in the NFL have asthma. Kendall Lamb for the Titans last year admitted that he had asthma. We have no admission or no valid information to say that he has asthma, but hitting the inhaler, maybe it's a possibility. Um, a lot of people are pointing out the pollen in the area. You go to a new area, there's a lot of pollen, you have asthma, that could trigger you. So that's all a possibility. But either way, here's what it comes down to. It's not a perfect start. He just came off the draft cycle where things are a little wonky in terms of how you prepared. It's not a good look. It's not what you want. Like I said, you want your first round pick coming out there, going gangbusters, just ready to go. But here's the reality. Alec Pierce, the Colts wide receiver that they picked, had to leave rookie minicamp for conditioning reasons. Traylon Burks came back day two from start to finish and was good to go. So listen, it can be multiple things. Yes, it can be disappointing. It can not be an ideal start. It can be a bad look. But while being that, it doesn't mean that the guy's not a good player. Like some people were in my comments saying, J-Rob drafted another bust. I mean, come on. I raised my eyebrow at it too. Like, oh, Jesus, here we go. But you guys got to have a modicum of logic here as well. It's just a simple conditioning issue. He came back day two. So, yes, it can be a bad look. It can be a, a, a less than ideal start. But it doesn't mean anything long term. It really doesn't. And some people said, someone said in my comments, AJ left his first rookie minicamp with conditioning issues. And I hate to continue to compare Traylon to AJ, but that's just the reality of the situation. Can't ignore it. So if that's true, which I don't recall off the top of my head, the minicamp reports from AJ Brown's rookie year. But if that's true, then again, and like I said, I pointed out the Alex Pierce example. These guys are coming back in real football. And Mike Vrabel said in his press conference after day one, these guys train with their trainer but it's just not the same as going through practice. So there's not a great way to, to be as prepared as you're going to have to be for your first NFL team action. But with that said, that's the Traylon Burks up and down. Again, not a great look, but guys, it really doesn't mean much going forward. So everybody take a collective breath. Let's all puff on our proverbial inhalers for a moment. It's okay. Moving forward, though. We are going to do just a, a full overall recap of day one and day two. We'll do day one first. We'll finish off the show with day two, going through not just Traylon Burks, but every other Titan, including Titans star rookie quarterback. I say star because I believe Malik Willis and how he performed over the two days of rookie minicamp. Before we get into that, though, I do want to tell you guys more about our title sponsor, BetOnline.net. Our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info, for all the latest odds, news, and developments, including stuff on this year's basketball's playoffs. Got some big game sevens that took place on Sunday. Man, basketball is in a great spot. Major League Baseball's regular season is here. You got UFC and boxing fights. You got um, futures for next year's NFL season. I mean, anything you could want, you could find at betonline.net. Betonline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action. Bet online where the game starts. Titan 
fans, it is a rookie minicamp recap Monday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We just talked about the whole Traylon Burks first day fiasco conversation. No big deal, guys. Let's be honest here. We're going to move forward. We're going to just do a full recap of day one and day two going over all the different names that you want to hear and how they did before we get into that. Do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do. Stream Monday through Friday, daily Tennessee Titans content all year long. I got the Malik Willis deep dive episode coming later on this week. I think I'm going to do a, a talent distribution breakdown of the Titans roster later on this week with my guy Will Lomas. So I got a lot of content ideas coming towards you guys. And also, truly before we move into day one, Guys, drink your water. Drink your water. It's hot, man. It is hot. I'm in Ohio and it's hot. You guys in the South? It's probably burning up. Drink the water. I'm drinking it right now. You in your car. I know you got a coffee. I know you got a coffee. Get some water too when you get to the office. Hit the water. All right? It's a serious matter, guys. Stay hydrated. But day one, speaking of (laughs) stay hydrated, Traylon Burks. Stay hydrated, buddy. Come on now. Day one, we're back. So other than the Traylon Burks thing, day one, Malik Willis. Strong arm was obvious. All reports are, man, this guy's got a laser. Had a couple nice touch throws as well, according to reports. So not only do you get the rocket laser arm, but you get nice touch on it. That's great. Also, the speed. It's real. It's clear. It's obvious. Okay. Things we know. Malik has a strong arm, he was accurate, threw a nice touch, and he's fast. He had two bullets over the middle, which is important because one of the concerns about Malik Willis coming out of the draft was his ability to throw over the middle of the field. He was a guy who targeted the outside of the field more often than not and wanted to throw it vertically or to the sideline. So getting comfortable with throwing over the middle of the field, which is a little more congested, will be important. So two nice throws over the middle of the field for Malik Willis to go along with showing the touch, showing the arm strength, showing the speed. Good good first day. Now it wasn't all great. It wasn't all great. We got to talk about it. Yeah, he had a few throws that were off target, but the real issue was the snaps. Malik Willis didn't take a lot of snaps from under center in college. And as you guys know, that will be very key in the pros. The Titans like to be under center. Okay. So, yes, that was a downside. So, overall, he showed all the traits, showed what you want, needs to clean up a few things that he's not used to. Perfectly fine. Also, we got to touch on this. With the Ryan Tannehill story, Malik did say that Tannehill invited all the rookie guys over to his house for a little cookout, little barbecue type thing. He said that Ryan was a good dude, uh, didn't even talk, didn't even recognize the comment that we are all aware of, the mentor comment. So, I just want to point out a couple of things because I know that my reaction to it, I didn't like the comments from Ryan Tannehill. I think he should mentor Malik Willis. I think it is part of his job. But of course, Mike Vrabel said it's not part of his job. Ryan needs to win football games. Malik said, Ryan's a good dude. No problems. Blah, blah, blah. Guys, what do you think that they're going to say? You think Malik Willis is going to get up to say, yeah, man, he's a jerk. I can't believe he would say that and not mentor me. You think Mike Vrabel is going to get up there and say, yeah, well, we talked to Ryan. We told him it is his job to, to help Malik Willis and, it, but, and throw gasoline on the fire. The NFL media is, is just absolutely searching with the microscope for compelling topics to talk about. That's why the Malik Willis-Ryan Tannehill story got picked up and run with for multiple days by national media outlets. You're not going to go in there as Mike Vrabel or Malik Willis and pour gasoline on that fire. The Titans are one of the most coached up, disciplined media teams in the league. They're literally told to talk about nothing. I know this for a fact. I have intel. They are told to talk about nothing. Even if it means lying, they're told to lie if it avoids a, a media land spike comment. So, yes, I have a problem with Ryan Tannehill not mentoring or saying that he doesn't want to mentor Malik Willis. Yes, I do think it's part of his job. And all you guys who think you got me because Vrabel and Malik said what they said, 
What else are they going to say? Wake up. Okay? Duh. Anyways, but solid day one for Malik. Kyle Phillips, the rookie out of UCLA. Big standout in day one. A bunch of catches over the middle, spinning catches, diving catches. Really impressive. Now, I pointed out on Twitter that a guy like Kyle Phillips is the kind of guy who's going to thrive without full pads and without 11 on 11. Okay, he's quick. The ways you stop a guy like Kyle Phillips are with physicality, press coverage at the line of scrimmage, rough him up, get in his chest. He's a smaller guy. Can't be quick when I got my hands on you. And none of that's going to happen in these scenarios. So I don't mean to, you know, be negative or anything. Kyle Phillips, I'm excited about. I made a sweet highlight video of him. I like Kyle Phillips. But these are scenarios where guys like Kyle can really, really look good. Like senior bull one-on-ones and stuff like that. All these small guys like Calvin Austin and Wendell Robinson. And they looked great at the senior bull because of that stuff. You know what I mean? When it gets physical and you put the pads on, let's see how the little guys do then. Okay. But still, really impressive catches. And that goes a long way for a wide receiver. Next, Chick Conquo had three catches, got a ton of work on blocking. Uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer looked good, looked athletic, a little anxious. Reports are he was jumping a little early for snaps and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of these observations and things, you guys can check the guys who were there. Teron Davenport, Ben Arthur, Jim Wyatt, uh, John Glennon, all do a great job. Teresa Walker. All do a great job covering it on site, but it's my job to kind of recap, put everything in a nice package for you guys so you know exactly what took place. A lot easier to do that than to comb through a bunch of different Twitter accounts yourself. So uh, a lot of great intel there from a lot of great reporters. Titans rookie minicamp day one. That was all of the big news that you need to know. We're going to go into day two where there were a lot more little nuggets to go over and a lot more standout performances from some of the Titans rookies. Before we get into that, though, do want to remind you guys about the best tasting protein bars ever from our friends over at Built Bar. Guys, I got to tell you about a new Built Bar. I got to. I just got a package of them. Oh, 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 so good. The Birthday Cake Puff Bar. So the Birthday Cake Bars, the originals, the OG Birthday Cake Bars were delicious. But now they've added that puff consistency, that puff texture, which tastes kind of marshmallowy on the inside. So you get kind of that, that birthday cake taste, you get some sprinkles on top, you get that puff texture in the middle. Oh my God. Go, go to built.com now, right now. Use the promo code locked 15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Get a mixed bar variety box, get whatever flavor you like, but guys, I'm serious. The Birthday Cake Puffs. Go order the Birthday Cake Puffs. They're low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, all covered in 100% real chocolate as well, though. I mean, ask anybody. Ask anybody who's had Built Bar. They'll tell you. Go get the Birthday Cake Puff Bars right now. 15% off. Locked 15 at Built.com. Titans fans, we are going to cap off this rookie minicamp recap Monday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast by going over day two of Titans rookie minicamp. It took place on Saturday. We talked about Traylon Burks, the, the controversy of day one, I guess. We talked about other day one highlights as well. Now we'll recap that day two on Saturday. And before we get into it, I got to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Make sure that you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. I do appreciate you guys getting all of your Tennessee Titans news here with me in under 30 minutes Monday through Friday. But now you need to get your NFL news and make your second listen the Locked On NFL podcast. Also free and available on all platforms. Getting all of your national news in under 30 minutes Monday through Friday. And I, your boy, am actually the host of the Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. So you're supporting me, supporting Locked On, getting your national news, getting your Titans news all together in a package. Make the Locked On NFL Podcast your second listen every day. But getting into day two. Also, before we get in, I know I always do this, but 
Uh, so I had someone reach out to me over the weekend and just talk about, I would say he gave some constructive criticism, uh, talking to you, Nick, my guy, appreciate you, uh, about, you know, how the show has been bouncing back between lives and recordeds and, and things like that. And I just want to say, guys, I just started recently going live during the draft. I am trying to work out the kinks. I appreciate your guys' feedback. I know why I get to the perfect uh, settling ground of lives and pre-records and, and dealing with the live chat and dealing with guys who don't pay attention or girls who listen that's not live and making sure that I cater the show to both crowds. I'm working on finding that balance every day, and I understand that, you know, one side, you may be, why aren't you live? Why aren't you answering questions in the comments? And then another side, you're bouncing around. When you take questions from comments, it's hard to follow, blah, blah, blah. So both you guys I'm trying to balance both of those, trying to do the right thing. And I just want to say I appreciate you guys while we work through this brand new phase of the Locked On Titans podcast. But uh, I will continue to work as hard as possible to make sure that I put out the best show as possible. As we got through the audio issues, we got through the technical issues. You guys helped me out with that. Now we'll get to making sure that we have everything uh, as solid and as smooth as possible. But I appreciate all you guys every day for your feedback, for your support, all that. But getting into day two here. As I mentioned in the first segment, at the end, Traylon Burks, back better than ever, start to finish on day two. He had two catches. He did have one drop with Roger McCreary guarding him, but a full day for Traylon Burks. Again, the controversy, overblown, stupid. It can be a a less than ideal start. That doesn't mean that it has to be some negative future consequences. Okay? So, anyway, Traylon Burks, back, catching balls, making plays. Awesome. Chigakonkwo, again, really, really focusing on his blocking in this rookie minicamp. He had uh, a really good catch as well, a 35-yarder right down the seam using that speed from Malik Willis. 30-yard completions from Malik Willis to Chigakonkwo down the seam. Woo! Put that in my veins, baby. I want more of that. That gets you going, okay? So, very exciting stuff there. But again, Chig has to add mass. And he's got to get better at blocking to have a a, a more complete role year one. Those are things he has to improve on now. So, the fact that he's hitting the ground running, putting in that work early, it's a great sign. I just want to say, from all of the interviews, all the comments uh, from the rookies, I don't know if this rookie class is going to be Incredible. But I know that they're not going to be trash. These guys love football. Listening to Roger McCreary and Theo Jackson talk about football. I, I know that you guys know. I'm of a tendency for the dramatic. Uh, I'm an expressive guy. Watching Theo Jackson and and Roger McCreary talk about football this weekend made me emotional. I love football. Now, I wasn't born in a six-foot athletic frame with great genetics uh, to give me the ability to play as long as these guys. So when I see guys who have the talent and have the body not only work hard, but love it. I mean, love the game, love playing, love practicing, love technique work. Roger McCreary talking about getting technique work in with Anthony Midget. Oh, I love it. I love it. So one thing I know from all of this is this class may not be 2019, but dear God, it's not going to be 2020. These guys love football, and that'll take you a long way in life, if you love and care about what you do and you're passionate about it. But moving forward, Chig hitting the blocking real hard. Uh, Nicholas Petit-Ferrer stayed after practice to get an extra 20, 30 minutes of sled work in. Uh, You know, when you fire off, you hit the sled, you push it back, man, sled drills. Oh, man, guys, I love watching rookie mini camps. I love seeing all the highlights and all the stuff, man. This is when the work matters so much. This individual development, Mike Vrabel talked about this over the weekend. This is where guys really work on their individual techniques. Once you get into training camp, it's team stuff. This is where the individual work is done, 
Oh, man, love it. So, Chig getting some extra blocking in, NPF getting some extra blocking in. Theo Jackson, I talked about him. Time to talk about him now. Had an interception on Malik Willis where he jumped a route, almost had another interception, had some good coverage throughout in seven on seven. So excited about Theo Jackson. And the fact that he was used in that star role by Tennessee by a good coaching staff his final year in college, the way he was miscast and misused the first two years, so much potential was there in the type of role that they used him at Tennessee in his last year. And Tennessee fans in the comments, remind your fellow Titans fans or let them know about how true that really is and how Theo Jackson took a leap forward when used correctly in the right system. Uh, Malik, really good on day two. Better. Chigakonkwo talked about how Malik was good getting him in and out of the huddle, getting him in and out of plays. Uh, there were still some fumbles on snaps. Malik talked about how that's something he didn't do a lot in college. So got to work with that. Got to get better there. But Malik was early to the field. Uh, even Jim White talked about how you could feel his energy. Uh, leadership, leading guys, high-fiving teammates, being encouraging, being uplifting. He was accurate throughout the, of course, some some misthrows here and there. He was accurate. And I do want to quote this from Jim Wyatt's uh, recap. He said, quote, pass the first test. And, and, and it's just the first test. I get it. It's basic math, first test. But Malik checked all the boxes, okay? Checked all the boxes. Kyle Phillips had another good day. Not quite as good as day one where he was like a star out there, but a good day. Roger McCreary, uh, good coverage, fluid out there, moved well. Uh, the running backs, Julius Chestnut, the undrafted free agent running back. I've been hearing, been hearing some buzz about the way he ran. He's a big physical power back. Hassan Haskins had some good runs as well. That'll be a fun little battle to watch. Uh, Julius Chestnut, a lot of things good coming out and. Man, guys, something about the name Julius Chestnut. Just sounds like a guy who should be in the NFL. Um, The last note I want to make for you guys, the kicker. The undrafted free agent kicker out of Iowa, Caleb Shudik. Uh, five for six on uh, Saturday. 33, 39, 44, 47, 53. Missed a 55-yarder, but I've heard he's got good leg. He's been pretty impressive early on, and I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility at all that... Uh, a uh, rookie kicker could beat out uh, Randy Bullock. I don't think it's likely, but it's not insane. It's not as insane as, you know, beating out one of the stud vets on the team. So, kicker competition. I'd get Sam Hot Ficken back in there as well. But anyways, that is going to do it for the day one, day two recap, the Traylon Burke saga to start things. The Titans veterans will join for organized team activities Today, Monday, or if you're watching on YouTube, tomorrow. So, it's here, baby. Football is back. Um, do want to mention that things were a little sloppy throughout the weekend overall from a team perspective. Mike Vrabel uh, let the guys have it a little bit here and there. But, hey, it's rookie minicamp. First real practices of the year. That's expected to happen. The journey has begun. That's the main takeaway. The journey has begun begun. But that's going to do it for me today though, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Tiger.